Hello and welcome to another Learn Learn Scratch tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can make a falling ball game. The idea is to dodge the balls. Every time you dodge the ball you get a point and your score increases. Every time you hit a ball then you lose a life and then once you've lost all of your lives it then tells you how many points that you've scored and it gives you a game over screen. Okie dokie, let's get started. So you need to log into Scratch. Make sure you log in. Um, don't just open Scratch because that way you'll be able to save your game if you don't finish it as you're uh, following the tutorial. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get Scratch down the bottom. So we'll just drag him down to the bottom. And he's a little bit big. So let's change his size to 50%. There you go. You can change it as much as you like. You can mess about with it and set it to whatever size you want. But I'm going to have it at 50 and then what we'll do is let's choose a backdrop. So go to choose backdrop and I'm going to choose the blue sky because it's got this floor um, and I quite like it. You can choose whatever backdrop you want, but um, that's what I'm going to do. Here we go. So we've got scratch and he's on the floor, which is perfect. So now what we're going to do is we're going to code scratch to get him to be able to move left and right. OK, so we're going to use the blocks over here. And the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to do a when start clicked. So we drag the when start click block over here. And when we start, all we're going to do is we're going to set up a little bit of a loop that checks to see if a key is pressed. And if a key is pressed, um, one of the left or right keys, whatever you're going to use, then it will move left and right. OK, so we use when start click. That's a little bit big. Let's go for that size forever so this is a forever loop so it's going to keep checking and all we're going to say is okay if the left key is pressed then we're going to move left so the way we do that is we go to sensing which is the blue ones the uh, lighter blue and we're looking for this key uh, at the moment it says space but let's change this to the left arrow there you go so if the left arrow is pressed we want to move them to the left and the way that we do that is we go, uh, we go, we're going to move 10 steps. Um, but the moment, the problem we got is if we move, if we press that now, let's just try that and we press left, you'll see that he actually moves right. And the reason is, is that, and that he's still facing right. So he's, he's going to move 10 steps forward, whichever way he's facing. So if we press the left arrow, what we need to do is we need to get him to turn left. And the way that we do that is we use this point in direction. And at the moment it's pointing 90, which is that way, which is no good. So let's drag him around to minus 90 and let's point him that way. Let's see what that does. OK, that's that's looking a bit better. But now, as you can see, what's happened is um, he's on his head. And the reason that is, is because at the moment the um, the direction of movement is in 360 degrees. We don't want that. We want left right movement. So what we do is we need this block here and we need that right at the start start of the uh, game. When the game starts, we set the left uh, rotation style and we do it just to left right. There we go. There we go. And now there you go. It moves left. Good. Excellent. There we go. Good. So we got that there, which is the left and right, which is fine. Um, there we go. Good. And now what we need to do is we've got that for the left and the right. So what we need to do now is we need to move that to the right arrow so that we can get the right arrow working as well. So when the right arrow is pressed, this time we're going to point in the direction of right. There we go. And again, move 10 steps. So if the left arrow is pressed, then we point in minus 90 and we move this way a bit. If the right arrow is pressed, then we point at 90 and we move that way. Make sure you press start. If you don't press start, then it won't update. There we go. That's looking much better. Again, you can change your speed. Um, you can change all those sorts of things. You can even choose a different character if you want. Uh, but I'm sticking with Scratch the Cat at the moment. Uh, now, the only problem now at the moment is, of course, that he's not really walking. He's just kind of sort of gliding along. And the reason he's, he's doing that is because he's not animated. And the way that we animate things in Scratch is we change their costume. So here's the costume he's got at the moment, which is the standard walking one. And what we really want to do is we need to sort of get it to flick in between these two costumes so that it makes it look like he's walking. OK, so how do we do that? Well, actually, it's really, really easy. All we do is 
we just say, okay, every time the, the left arrow is pressed, every time it checks this, if it is pressed, then we just shift to the next costume. And we do that for both of those. There we go. So if the left eye is pressed, then we go on to next costume. Again, we press start again just to make sure it all clears it. And there you go. You can see he's walking left and right. So now you've got scratch the cat. He's walking left and right and he's really, really happy. Perfect. Good. What we'll also do is rather than just leave him as sprite one, let's rename, rename him to the player or you could call him cat if you want, but I'm going to call him the player because that way I know that this character here is the one that the player controls. Good. So now that we've got the cat uh, working, which is perfect, we're going to need to create a new sprite and we're going to need to create one of our falling balls. So all we do here is we go choose a sprite and we go on to the ball one here you can choose again any ball you want whether it's beach ball or whatever you want i'm just going to choose the standard ball if you want to change the color of the ball then click on costumes and you can change it to whatever color you want i'll choose this blue ball that looks like a purpley blue ball there we go good so here's our ball and at the start of the game we want it to start at the top of the screen here so how do we do that? Well, again, we need to use one of these control blocks and we say, OK, when start is clicked, let's move him right to the top of the screen. So the way that we do that is we need to use his coordinates. Um, I'll just for a moment here, if I choose choose backdrop, you don't have to do this. It's just so I can demonstrate to you what's happening. And if you go right down to the bottom, you can see this X, Y grid here. And that shows you how Scratch does its coordinates. And you'll see here the Y coordinates, just like in maths. The top of the screen of Y is 180 at the top. The middle is 0 and the bottom is minus 180. And the same with X pretty much, except because it's wider, it starts at minus 240 on the left and it's plus 240 on the right. So what we want to do is we want to get it start right up at the top, which of course is Y180. Um, but before we do that, let me just go back to, um, let's get rid of that costume. We don't want that one. And let's get rid of that one as well. There you go. Back to this backdrop. Okay. So we want our ball here to appear at the top of the screen. So we click on the ball so that we know that we're going to be coding the ball. And there we go. We say, okay, when start clicked, let's move to the top of the screen. So let's set our Y coordinate to 180. 180 there you go there you go and now you can see that anytime i click start it will go back to the top um but also to make it a little bit harder we want the ball we don't want the ball just to be in the same place all the time in fact actually no, we'll leave that for a moment we'll make change that in a minute okay so it starts at the top of the screen and what we want it to do is at the start of the game all we want it to do is start falling down so the way we do this is again we put it inside of another loop um, and we use a forever loop because we want it to keep on falling every time it gets to the bottom we want it to go back up to the top and look at how we do that in a minute but basically we want it to keep on doing the same thing over and over and all we need to do here is we go okay here we go we'll just change my y by minus let's do minus five and now there you go if you press start you can see it goes from the top of the screen and it falls all the way down to the bottom. Let's do that again. Good. Brilliant. That's okay, but it's going to make for a pretty boring game if it doesn't keep doing that. So we need to say, okay, when it does get to the bottom of the screen, let's make it go back to the top. And the way that we do that is we say, okay, uh, if the Y coordinate here is less than um, whatever it needs to be down at the bottom of the screen, then we need to put it back to the top and if you remember from before the top of the screen is plus 180 the bottom of the screen is minus 180 so what we'll say here is we'll say okay um, if the um, if the y coordinate of the ball is less than minus 180 y position in fact let's just do that less than minus let's do minus 170 so that it actually when it gets down to this floor bit here it kind of goes back up if its y position is less than minus 180 170 let's put it back up to the top uh, and what we'll do there i sort of cheated it and i duplicated um, you can sort of grab there Ooh, hang on there we go 
And there you go. And we've used this set Y to 180. So now every time it goes down to, from uh, the top, it, um, every time it reaches the bottom, it goes back to the top, which is okay, but it's going to make for a pretty easy game because I always know exactly where this ball is going to appear and it's going to drop down in the same way. So what we really need to do here is get it so that it moves to a random position on the top of the screen each time. And the way that we do that is we go, um, what we can do, actually we can cheat. Let's No, let's not cheat. Let's show you how to do this properly. What we do is we set the Y position to go up to the top and then we set the X position to be a random amount along this top here. And the X position, it could be anywhere between minus 240 and plus 240. So we go onto these green ones here and we pick random and we set the X coordinate to somewhere between minus, let's do minus 230 and plus 230. So it doesn't go right on the edge of the screen. And there you can see it now. Good. So there you go. Well, and it's falling down, which is good. There we go. Down, 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 down. Brilliant. Um, which is okay, which is fine. And what we probably want to do now is let's add some sound effects onto here so that every time the ball gets to the bottom, it goes donk. So the way we do that here is we can go on to sound and we'll just play the sound pop every time it gets to the bottom. There we go. Perfect. Good. So now every time the ball reaches the bottom, it goes pop, which is brilliant. Um, so now we're sort of, you know, it's starting to get into be a bit like a game. But of course, what we also want it to do is that every time it hits the player, we want the player to lose a life. Uh, but in order to do that, the player is going to need to have some way of keeping track of how many lives it's got. And the way that we do that in Scratch and in programming in general is we use variables. And variables are just like a little container where we can keep a value that we keep track of. Um, so, and we can call it whatever we want. So we're going to click on make a variable and let's call this lives. There we go, because the player is going to need a certain amount of lives. Now, at the moment, the player's lives is zero, which is no good, really, because at the start of the game, we want that player to have three lives. So what we do is we get the set lives bit here and we set the lives to three at the start of the game. So when the game starts, if we click start, there you go, the player's got three lives. But we want it to say, though, is that, OK, if the ball touches the player when it's falling, then the player needs to lose a life. And the way we do that is we just code the ball and we say, OK, ball, every time you touch the player, that player needs to lose a life. And we can do that quite easily. We just use another if statement and we put it after this other if statement for checking if it's got to the bottom of the screen. And this one's a little bit easier because now we just use the, the touching one here and we say if touching player. Obviously, if you didn't bother to change your name of your cat to player or you changed it to something else, then this is probably going to say sprite or whatever you've changed yours to. So if touching the player, what do we need to do? Well, first of all, we need to change the player's lives by minus one. Oh, don't use the set one. That's no good. Don't set lives to minus one because it will just fix it at minus one. What we want to do is just change the lives, uh, what they have, whatever they've got, just take one away. So chain, make sure you use change and not set. So we just change lives by minus one if they're touching the player. And then we also need to do this bit here, uh, duplicate, uh, where we move the ball back up to the top. So we change the lives by minus one and then we move the ball back up to the top. If you don't do that, then it's just going to keep on losing all the lives and it will be game over straight away. Um, so we want to do that. Let's just test that. Let's click start. Make sure that's all OK. And here we go. Oops, got three lies. Oh, down to two, down to one. Good, good. OK, so we're getting somewhere near, a bit nearer. So what we can do now, we've got a, um, got a sound effect there for the, if it um, goes back up to the top. Let's add another sound effect so that if it does touch the player, the player knows that something's gone wrong. So let's have a look at the sounds. At the moment, we've got boing and pop. Uh, oops. Boing, boing, there we go. Um, so we've got boing and pop there. If you want more sounds, then just click on choose sounds and choose a sound here and pick whatever you want. Um, I'm not going to go through all the lovely, annoying sound effects, but you can find, uh, find one. 
and just click on one. So I'm going to use boing if it touches the player. So because it's already there. So let's go back to code and we say, OK, um, start sound if it touches. The player let's play the boing one to say that oh hang on it's gone wrong and um, make sure you use this start sound boing start sound pop don't use until done and the reason being is the until done when uh, with that one it will just stop this whole script until the whole sound is played so it will kind of put pauses in the, in the actual ball falling we, do, we don't want that okay so let's just try that here we go there you go so we now have two lives pop here we go one life, zero lives. There we go. Okay, good. Um, so, so that's okay so far. But at the moment, if it gets to zero, what happens is, well, <laughs> not a lot at the moment. It just keeps counting down, down to zero. And you can see here, you can just keep going minus one, minus two. So what we really want it to do is when it gets to zero lives, we need to stop the whole thing and say game over. So how do we do that? Well, actually, it's, it's pretty easy. What we do is we're going to use the stage to control this. And if we click on the stage, we're going to create another backdrop. Um, so this one here is blue sky. So let's just duplicate that. Now, the original blue sky, let's call this the game screen. Game screen. And that's just this game backdrop there. And then this one is going to be the game over backdrop. So game over. There we go. And what we need to do is when it's game over, we need to say game over. There we are. So let's go, let's change this from there. Let's put that to like marker. Oops, there we go. Game over. Whee, there we go. It's probably a little bit big, but we'll find the right size. There you go. And um, we'll just have a nice fixed game over screen there. Good. So what we need to do is we need to say, okay, when the um, when the player's lives reaches zeros, zero, we'll just stop the whole game and we'll just display the game over screen. So the way we can do that is let's code this within the game over screen itself. Make sure you've clicked on the stage. I'll just click on that just to make sure. And here we go. Events. At the start of the game, so when the game starts, all we're going to do is we're going to sit there and we're going to wait until effectively it's game over. So we're going to wait until the player's lives equals zero. So we're waiting to, and this time we're doing a z, uh, equals and lives equals zero. Once the player lives equals zero, then what we need to do is we need to stop um stop all the other things that are happening so how do we stop everything else in the game well we could use um something here with a control where we just do stop all um but the problem with that is that we actually we don't just want to stop everything we want to do specific things so for instance the player we want to stop but the ball we want the ball to disappear because otherwise if the ball's here when it when it's game over then it, it, it's going to look a bit sort of messy isn't it so what we really need to do is on the game over, we're going to do different things for different, um, de depending on whether the player or the ball. So we, to do that, we can use a broadcast. So we'll wait until lives equal zero and we'll broadcast a message called game over. Uh, there we go. And this message is just like a text message that goes out to every single, um, every single sprite in the whole game. And all we say is okay um, for instance when the um when the stage re receives this message that it's sent to itself saying game over all the stage is going to do is we're going to switch to the backdrop game over which means that at the start of the game here we need to make sure it's on the game screen i'm not on the game owner sc over screen so uh, when the stage receives game over it switches to the backdrop game over uh, when the player uh, receives game over, so where's when I receive game over? We just want him to stop. Okay, so we can just do stop all scripts in, uh, stop other scripts in this sprite. So the player will just stop. And when the ball stops game over, we want it to disappear. So when I receive game over, 
we're just going to make it hide and stop all of the sprites. There we go. Hide, 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 hide. When I receive game over, hide. And uh, we'll also stop other scripts in this sprite. So this kind of this uh, these broadcasts here are really really useful um, for doing different things uh, using these messages. There we go. Stop other scripts. There you go. Now there is one complication. There's one little complication in that because you've clicked uh, when I receive game over hide, if you then click start again, the ball won't reappear. So what we need to do, because we've hidden it using this game over thing, we also need to do another one here saying, OK, actually, when we start the game, show. If you don't do that, your ball will just disappear after the first game over and it will never come back. Here we go. So let's see how that works. So live still on three. There we go. He's down to two. He's down to one. Game over. There we go. So that works perfectly well. Good. Now we've just got two improvements to make. First of all, we want a score that keeps count. Every time you a ball goes down and doesn't hit the player, we want to increase the score by one. So how do we do that? Well, again, we need a variable to keep track of what the score is. So we click on variables and we make a variable and we call it score. And we're going to get the player to keep track of their score. So we click on the player and we'll just add it here at the start above the lives one. So score uh, at the start of the game, set the score to zero, which is great. And with the ball, every time it goes on this top one here, so therefore it doesn't touch the player, then we just increase the score by one. Change score by one. Good. So now, there we go. You can see the score is going up, which is perfect. Good. So the score is going up, which is really good. And then at the end of the game, when we die, we need the player to say what their score was. I mean, it is here, but... You know, it's nice to get the player to say it. So how do we do that? Well, that's really, really easy. All we do is we get the player, player to say some things. So we say, uh, let's say, well done. Let me duplicate that. You scored. There we go. And then we're going to say two points. Uh, now, the only problem here is that we're going to have to get it to do two things. We're going to have to get it to say how many points they've scored and then say the word points. So in order to do that all on one line, uh, then what we can do is we need to use the join. There we go. And um, we're going to join however many points that they got using their score variable. So whatever score that they got, it's going to say score and then it's going to say points. Make sure you do a space bar at the start. Um, because otherwise um, it'll be like two points, but without a space in between them. There you go. So let's just try that now. There we go. Three, two, one. Game over. Well done. You scored one point. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, now, yeah. Mm, okay, it does say one point because they only scored one. Um, so you could change it here. You could actually put an if statement saying if they only scored one, um, then just say point instead of points. But I'm not too bothered about that. Hopefully people will score more than one point. Okay, so we've got a game that's working pretty well here so far, but it's a bit boring and not very challenging. Um, and there's two ways we can make it more challenging. First of all, we can make these balls go faster. And that's really, really easy to do. What we just say is every time the ball reaches the bottom, when we bring it back to the top, we make it move just a little bit faster each time. And if you look on the ball here, where it says change Y by minus five, that minus five is controlling its speed. OK, so that's the ball speed. Um, so at the start of the game, yeah, let's set it to minus five or whatever it is. But we need to be able to change that. That speed is going to vary, which means, again, we're going to need to use a variable. Um, now, what we'll do here is we'll go, this time we're going to put the ball speed in the player. And the reason being is that we're going to create lots of copies of the ball, so it might get a bit confusing. 
Um, so what we're going to do is we say, whereas there's only one player, so we, there's, there's only going to be one. Um, oh, and we need to create another variable, don't we? Make a variable, and let's call this ball speed. There we go. And ball speed, here we go. And we'll set the ball speed to minus five. There we go, good. So here now we've got is we've got a ball speed that we can change. At the start of the game, it's minus five. Um, but what we need to do is we need to make sure that, um, that this change Y is actually changing by that ball speed. Otherwise, it'll only ever, even though we'll change this ball speed variable, the amount it moves won't change. So let's just change that to ball speed there. There we go. And now uh, what we can do is we can say, okay, every time we get to the bottom here, let's just change that ball speed and make it go a little bit faster. There we go. So, and we'll change it by uh, minus, 0 point, minus 0 0.2 maybe. Again, you can vary this. You can change that by whatever you want. Um, but let's see how that works. Let's see if that speeds it up. So now you'll see here the ball speed, oops, let's just move the player out of the way, will should slowly but surely get faster and faster and faster. Um, and it is starting to speed up. Yeah, you can see it's actually starting to speed up a bit. If you don't believe me, then the easiest way to do that is change that by minus one or something, and you'll soon see that it'll, um, that should now start to go a lot faster, a lot quicker. Let's have a look. There we go. And suddenly it's going crazy, crazy fast. Yeah, there you go. You can see it straight away now. Good. There you go. But I'll set that to minus 0 0.1 for the moment. There you go. So now uh, we've got two things that are happening now. So that um, so now it's going to get a little bit harder because the ball speed is speeding up each time, starting at minus five, but it's getting slowly and surely faster, which just means it's going to drop faster. And also what we can do now to make it the final extra level of difficulty is let's, instead of just having one ball at the start of the game, let's have three balls. And what we can do here is we just go duplicate, duplicate you can change the colors if you want to you can have more than three if you want um but now what we've got is we've got three balls there we go here we go good instead of just one ball falling uh, which is much much better all three are falling now um however there is a bit of a problem in that they're all falling at the same time and that's because right at the start of the game they all started falling at the same time and therefore um, they're all kind of synchronized together. What we really want to do is have a bit of delay between each ball falling so that it, it's not quite as, you know, they're not all dropping exactly at the same time. So the way we'll do that is we'll just leave the first ball alone, but the second ball and the third ball, what we'll do is we'll just use a weight. And we'll just put there weight 0. The second ball, we'll get him to wait for half a second. And the third ball, we'll get him to wait for one second. And this way now, there you can see, at the start of the game, they're all a bit more staggered. There we go. And hopefully now, you'll also notice as well, because we've got three balls falling, that ball speed change starts to go quite a bit more rapidly. There you go. So now it's because obviously each ball is increasing the speed when it gets to the bottom. So let's see how fast that goes. There we go. Again, you might want to tweak that 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 or 0 0.3 or something. Um, so, But you can have a play with it however you want to do. So there you go. Uh, so there is the falling ball game. What I'll do in a future tutorial, and I'll post it on YouTube, is we'll look at how we can improve the game even more. We'll do a start menu, and we'll look at how we can display the player's score at the end. Rather than just having it the, um, the cat saying it, we can do it so that it displays it in big numbers on the top. And we can also look at how we can in, um, include some, you know, some background music in the game as well to make it a little bit more exciting and maybe some power ups as well. But that will do for today. If you did like the tutorial, then please like and subscribe. If you're struggling with any of these scripts, then I'll put a link in the video tutorial for uh, to my website where it will um, display these scripts for you so you can check your script against mine if you're struggling. Okay, thank you very much and goodbye.